All right, I've been uh, dreading this trip actually for a while. And the reason is I had just replaced the fuel pump on uh, my boat and it never had an actual fuel pump before. They were lift pumps, but uh, I'm telling you what, I've been out here five minutes and I can already tell you my motor is no longer sneezing. My motor is no longer coughing. My motor is no longer um, smoking excessively. So replacing those LP pumps on these AUX 66 motors has got to be one of the best mods you can do. Uh, time will tell how it lasts, but uh, no fuel leaks that I can see at this moment. And uh, I'm just very excited to have a boat that can actually coast at 900 on the tack and not sneeze, cough, and die. Um, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, other than that, we are here in the fall. Fishing is going, uh, reaction baits are going. There's lots of shad in the lake. The water is still up here at Chatfield. You can see uh, just to my left here, the handicap pier still has water almost to the top of it. Um, you can actually go underneath that bridge uh, sometimes when the water level's dropped. Um, so anyway, we're out here, we're gonna get after it. Uh, I'll let you know how the fishing is. I'm marking tons of fish on structure right now. Shatter on the forage. We're using jig and wraps and blade baits. Let's get after it. I hope you enjoy this episode. All right, welcome back to another episode of Catching Colorado. I am here on beautiful Chatfield Reservoir. Um, it's fall, the fish are definitely biting. Uh, they're on a full predator bite. They're eating shad balls. And we're gonna get out here and see if we can use some reaction baits like blades, jigs, jigging wraps, paddle tails, things like that to get them to eat. Um, what you generally wanna do is try to match the forage. So, you know, anything, you know, kind of that one inch to three inch range is kind of the forage here in Chatfield. And uh, you wanna be very erratic. These fish are going after the bait right now. So this is not a slow bite. This is not um, some sort of cadency thing. You wanna be popping them and get some reaction going. So we're gonna get after it and see if we can figure out what they like and uh, stay tuned. I think we're gonna have a fun one today. So as you remember, I have a uh, Garmin Panoptix. Um, I guess I call it live scope now. I just keep calling it Panoptix because that's what it is to me. Um, but I'm gonna put this down in the water and the whole goal for me is to kind of see the fish before I drive my boat over them. These fish can be skittish. Um, they are moving around a lot, but they can be skittish. So what I wanna do is try to find those fish, figure out which way I need to cast and cast to them rather than get right on top of them. And then if we feel like we wanna do some vertical jigging, we can change it up a little bit, but we are bombing cast today, not doing any of the vertical stuff and we're turning on the pan optics now, so let's get it going. So as you can see, we got some fish movement down here on the bottom. This is about 25 feet off to the right of the boat, and that's kind of where I want to be. This is sort of where a little bit of uh, contour starts, so that's kind of the fish we want to target. So we're gonna start there, see if we can end up catching a fish. Man, that light is just brutal. Let's see if I stand here, if that helps a little bit. Gee, sorry about that. So I generally start with like a heavier bait because I feel like you can search the water a little bit more with a heavier bait. And with jigging wraps or with anything that's like a full reactionary style bait, cast it out there. I like to keep a tight line all the way to bottom because sometimes they will hit it as it hits the bottom. And then once it gets on the bottom, we're kind of doing this 10 to noon thing and then letting it fall, 10 to noon, letting it fall, 10 to noon, letting it fall. And you could play with that reaction to try to figure out what the fish are liking. But generally speaking, I think that keeps it within the strike range and enough aggression that they wanna come right after it. So we're gonna cast this a few hundred times and then maybe change our strategy if need be. There we go. Nice fish, great fish. Man, he hit it right on that fall too. Absolute beauty. I have not even gotten my net out. Just felt like it wasn't gonna happen that fast, but here it is. We're 
first fish of the day. Let's see if we can do a little POV cam here. This thing coming in. Feels like a nice one. Yeah, that's a good fish. Not huge, but it'll do. Alrighty, there we go. First walleye to the net. Love it. Let me get them unhooked and I'll show them to you here in a second. First little, first little Chatfield walleye of the night. Just absolutely gulped that jigging wrap. Look at that big, pretty dorsal fin. God, don't you just love these fish? Whoo, love it. First fish down, let's go get some more. I'm gonna put on the trusty, dusty GoPro harness. We're gonna go old school for you guys today. See if we can catch some fish old school style. So that last one, I was just doing really short pops and setting it right back down on bottom. This bite can be done with a whole bunch of different baits, um, but I traditionally like to use um, jigging wraps and blade baits. I do this all summer. This isn't just a fall thing, um, but definitely in the summer it helps. So um, using jigging wraps and blade baits, this particular rod, this is a tactical elite bass rod. They don't sell this one anymore, um, but they have one very similar. The resolve bass is very similar. Um, and then I think they're gonna come with a, a new uh, series as well called the Taction. And uh, that could be a, a very comparable model as well. Seven foot medium. Uh, I like mediums for jigging wraps. I like medium lights for blade baits. And usually with jigging wraps, I'm a lot more aggressive and with blade baits, I'm a little bit softer. So I like to really get a bunch of action out of these baits. That took a while to sink. I like to get a lot of action out of these baits when they're jigging wraps, when they're heavier and they can fall faster. And then any of the blade stuff. Ooh, I just got hit there. Ooh, missed him again. Wow, finicky. There we go. <laughs> he hit me three times. Ah, now he came off. Right on the edge there. He hit me three times before he finally took the whole bait. I just love these reaction style bites because they feel like they're hitting like a freight train. It's the same thing I got into jerk bait fishing. And the jerk baits, it was an absolute blast because you just twitch, twitch, and then boom, your whole rod almost feels like it's going to get ripped out of your hands. Just absolutely love this kind of fishing. So I'm fishing a shelf here, and it's very hard to tell the bottom as I'm coming up the shelf. But once you get to the top, the walleyes are just sitting right on the edge of that. And they're just ambushing these baits and i'm actually i'm not working it super super aggressive oh that's a good fish that might be a carp i think i just hooked into a carp here <laughs> i just hooked this fish and it almost ripped my rod in the water this might be a nice carp here carp or a big walleye we'll hope for a walleye but the way it started to run felt carpy to me Let's see, he's staying down like a walleye now. Whoo, he hit that thing like a tank. Ah, uh, just hooked him on the underside. Nonetheless, walleye number two. There we go. Another walleye here. This one's again, just a little bit short. Absolute beauty. Great little eater, but uh, not a Chatfield. He ain't 18, he's probably 16 and a half. But we caught him right here on the underside. Sometimes I'll get over the top of it and that'll end up happening. We're gonna get him back. Off he goes. So it doesn't take a lot 
to get the reaction going on these, these baits. So we're gonna keep getting after it. All these fish kind of getting caught in the same area. There's a, a little bit of a hump here that I'm casting to and I'm throwing it way out there. So I'm throwing it into a pit, like a 40 foot pit. And then I'm letting that thing land on the inside edge somewhere here and then hop, hop, hop. And when I get it here, you can feel it because it starts to get like really short hops. And that's where I'm getting bit is right on the top of this thing. So uh, let's see if we can replicate it again. I do think that keeping your rod more vertical gets you more bites. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just how I've always done it. But when I was taught this technique, I was taught keeping the rod a lot more vertical because it helps get that bait up and it's produced a ton of fish for me. I can't even fish another way with these jigging wraps. A lot of people say, well, you don't have enough power to get the hook set. You got plenty of power, just lean back. Put yourself in the recliner. You'll catch two or three in a group of fish and then it's nothing. And you're like, where'd the fish go? And really all they did was just kind of swim 10 feet over the other way. Um, so if you have options to cast, you know, this way, straight out, this way, behind the boat, you give yourself a lot more opportunity. Um, and usually those fish are more willing to bite the first couple casts that you make that direction uh, than they will be if you just keep consistently pounding that same section. So anyway, we'll see if it plays out in our favor here. A lot of times you'll catch them on that, that pop up. Oh, just right there, I missed them. Go back down, pop back up. Go back down, pop back up. Woo, there's a school of shad right there. Check out that school of shad. How's your back? Woo! Look at them, look at the walleyes coming up for them right there. Woo hoo hoo hoo! I mean, yeah, look at them. Sorry. These fish are not liking this color. So, <clears throat> talking about color and uh, reaction bait fishing. Uh, I was using a blade bait there. Uh, this is a, a little bit more active blade bait, um, but you can see the color is kind of like that green, silver, blue perch looking thing. Um, in the sun, this can be really productive, but when it's cloudy like this, a gold is gonna give you more flash. And if it's stained water, which is a little stained, maybe a brighter color. So I'm gonna to switch to something gold and then we'll try that and see if we get any different results. So in cloudier water, I'd be switching to something like this. I got a pink with a white bottom and then I have a gold with kind of a black stripe. Either one of these is gonna provide a lot of action and a lot of flash in the water, especially with cloud cover. My main camera is just desperate to sit in the sun. So I apologize for that. Sun's going down here. We got a little bit of time left. Gonna try to take advantage of all of it. Got a pot of fish right out here. Hey, will one of y'all do me a favor and email Rapala and tell him to stop making chrome jigging wraps where the fins fall off? Because I just fished one without fins for like the last 10 minutes. Real smooth. So 
seeing bait balls everywhere, but just not getting them to bite at the moment. <laughs> I got him. He was right underneath the boat. <laughs> there we go. Got him right in the snoot. There we go. A little walleye. Chatfield action. Got that one right on the snoot. He's going back. That one was right underneath me. I'm going to try that again. Seeing a lot of fish that are kind of more suspended now. As the sun's going down, you'll find that the walleyes get more active because of this change in light period. Um, so I've got a lot of walleyes that are kind of five foot off bottom, something in, in that range. Um, they're kind of staging for, you know, those bait fish. They're gonna come right over the top. They silhouette them up above and, you know, they kind of ambush them. So um, we're just working this jigging wrap, but I may, you know, work it a little higher. I might swim it through the column in order to give it an opportunity for those fish to see it. Um, we are mostly casting, we're not doing a ton of vertical jigging, but that when I started to reel in my bait, I saw on the live scope, four or five fish chase it. So instead of uh, just giving up on those fish, I just dropped it back on their head and one small dumb one decided to give it a go. <laughs> Trying to see if I can put just one more in the boat before we call it a night here. I know it's getting hard to see me, hang on. Might have a nice sunset tonight. We'll see. Sky's lighting up pretty good. Oh man, look at that shad ball. That is a giant, giant shad ball right there. You can see it right up here. Watch it for a second. See if I can find it again. There it is. So we'll watch it for a second, it's moving left. And a lot of times you'll see walleyes, here's some right here. They're seeing those shad balls and they're starting to follow them. This one's going left pretty good. Look at how immense that shad ball is. I mean, there's just a ton of shad in that thing. And there's a walleye right underneath trying to take a snack right now. So we're gonna try to go catch him. Bunch of fish right there, 60 feet. I'd say that's about right on the snoot, and it is. See it going down right in front of those fish, and one's chasing. See if we can get them to bite here. There it is. I told you that fish was chasing me. Ah, I just came off. That fish was chasing me. I saw it. The bait went in the water. It went all the way down right in front of those fish. And he wanted it, man. He followed that thing for 10 feet or so. He just came off there at the end. That's the thing with jigging wraps. You are gonna lose fish. You just have to get used to it. It is what it is. Here's another fish right here at 55. See if we can sharpshoot him. It might be a little long, let's see. Mm. Oh yeah, there we are. Yeah, he went high. There's still a couple fish on bottom. Let's see if we can get them to react. Nice thing is, is right now, I'm surrounded by baits. So we've got shad everywhere near me. So I just want to present myself as a bait fish that just got nicked by maybe another walleye. See, they swim through there so fast. And the next thing you know, they're getting, they're getting smashed by walleye. So if you act like a dying fish on the bottom, it's almost impossible for them to not want to eat. We got another nice one hooked up here. He's going to go maybe 16 or so. Right in the snoot. He 
You can't tell me this guy's not a little angry. Flared out gills, going right for that bait. So much fun out here, just reactionary style fishing. I, I never get sick of this, especially with the live scope. What an advantage it is to have. People say it's cheating. Yeah, it is. It's cheating, but it is so cool to see what the fish are doing so you know what you're doing with your rod is working or not. How are they reacting to that bait? Um, really, really helpful stuff. So we're putting fish in the boat and I'm having a blast. There is a nice fish hanging out about 40 feet here, right on the edge of this drop off. So I'm gonna put it about 50, and then I'm gonna hope that that bait just slides off the edge, and then I'm gonna bring it back up over the top and try to put a jigging wrap hook in this fish's face. See how that goes. Oh, he got bit immediately. He got bit two or three times right there. Woo. Couple good fish right behind the boat. See if we can get the ones behind the boat to play. There we go. Got him. Yeehaw. Saw these guys on the, the fish finder on the live scope right at the back of the boat. Oh, he just came off. Oh, no, he didn't. He just almost shook me, though, off. There we go. Got him right in his walleye cheeks. Caught him on the side there. Didn't quite get him where I wanted to. Beauty fish. That might be the last one. We might be calling it here. I'm gonna let him go. All right, so hope you guys enjoyed the episode. That's just me kind of messing around here on Chatfield late fall, uh, catching reaction bait um, style fishing. You know, you're, you're catching these walleye, acting as shad. You're getting a nice little pop on the bait there. Um, you can try slow, you can try fast. Today a moderate worked, um, but just working those baits and making sure you have consistent movement. Um, these fish go crazy for it and a live scope definitely helps, especially if you're cruising an edge or a weed edge or a drop off. All of that stuff is gonna be key focal points for these fish as they ambush the shad. You can also look for birds. Birds are another great sign. And then beyond that, you know, just trust your graph. You start seeing bait balls, you uh, see them in the same area, pin that spot and come back right at dusk and you're gonna have a lot of success. If you guys could leave a like and subscribe, it would help me out a ton. Uh, we're always trying to reach new anglers and we're trying to get the word out there about Colorado and how awesome of an experience this place is. So if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you could subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And we will see you next time on Catching Colorado. Man, I'm hearing these Drake mallards just quacking away in the trees. Getting me really excited for hunting season. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.